So thank you for joining us for the ANSI Overview and Orientation webinar. We're delighted to have you. We also host a live webinar the first Friday of each month. So if you're interested in joining, please do so. You know, we really do have a, a nice mix of attendees that include new members, people new in their roles, or others that are thinking about becoming ANSI members. So today, the webinar is ANSI Overview and Orientation, and I'd like to begin with describing who ANSI is and what we do. Our mission is to enhance both the global competitiveness of U.S. business and the U.S. quality of life by promoting and facilitating voluntary consensus standards and conformity assessment systems and safeguarding their integrity. ANSI was founded in 1918 and we are celebrating our 100-year anniversary this year. We have a long history and strong reputation as working in close collaboration with all stakeholders to solve industry problems on behalf of the United States and around the world. There are two common misconceptions that we hear often, and one is people think we're a government agency. And while we work with over 65 agencies, we are a completely separate private organization, a nonprofit 501c3. The second common misconception is that we develop standards, and yes, we do work with about 240 standard developing organizations, commonly called SDOs. We don't actually develop the standards. We provide the process by which they are developed. The ANSI Federation represents and serves the diverse interest of more than 270,000 companies and organizations and over 30 million professionals worldwide. Our federation includes industry, government, trade associations, academia, individuals, standard developers, professional societies, service organizations, consumer and labor interest, and many more. Getting to know who your fellow members are, this chart illustrates our demographics in terms of membership categories. And you'll see that 60% represent company members, 28% organizational or associations, about 6% are government, 4% international, and 2% educational. And this allows us to bridge the public and private sectors and offer a neutral forum. Our objectivity and independence commands confidence, trust, integrity, and respect within the United States and around the world. The next slide provides you a distribution of our company member demographics in terms of industry. We do have a cross-section of industries represented, and as you might imagine, a large percentage is manufacturing and technology, but it also includes services which in the last several years continues to grow. As a matter of fact, the Department of Commerce and International Trade Office has reported on the growing services sector as representing over 80% of the gross domestic product and also represents 30% of exports. To that end, our ANSI senior staff and board developed a board task group to research and study this growing sector to determine where ANSI could play a role. More on that in just a moment. The next slide illustrates the makeup of the company members in terms of job responsibilities and categories. And you'll see it's quite varied from C-level to manager, director, administrator, engineer, coordinator, and such. So how can you participate? You might be wondering, what role can I play? Well, this particular slide really is at the heart of the opportunity, the opportunity that maximizes your organization's visibility to benefit the most from your membership. As the name suggests, each of these policy setting committees develop policy and position decisions regarding their specific areas, whether it be the National Policy Committee, the International Policy Committee, the Intellectual Property Rights Committee, the Conformity Assessment Policy Committee, and Regional Standing Committees. Another very active way you can participate is through our member forums. 
and also being part of our board of directors. The ANSI organizational structure, as you'll see on this slide, really does demonstrate at the very top the ANSI members are the driver of everything that we do, and that's why it's critically important for you to help us help you identify the issues and challenges you face in both the domestic and international marketplace so we can best serve you and represent your interests around the globe. So how do you stay connected? ANSI membership gives you early warning about emerging issues that could impact your business. And one of the best ways we can provide you with help is giving you timely and relevant information. We have a weekly publication called What's New, and it contains a host of information on announcements, events, meetings, and training. What's New, you'll see an illustration on the slide. It gives you a host of information, and this is just an example of some of the important topics and links that you can access. And you can share this. So if you're not already receiving that, we encourage you to subscribe and also distribute to your colleagues. And then if you want to be very specific, you can subscribe to our new subscription opt-in. And it's a new subscription alert. And you have the ability to select all or select news items based on your individual needs. We're already receiving lots of positive feedback, so when you have a chance, we invite you to subscribe. Also, on a weekly basis, we update Standards Action, and that is the Institute's key public review vehicle. It provides our members and the public timely and accurate information and enables effective participation in the standards development process, both in the U.S. as well as internationally. And still further, as an ANSI member, you can receive discounts on standards publication, subscription agreements, including ISO and IEC and other standards collections, discounts on events, and courses at NYU. So what do we do nationally? Well, ANSI's role with policymakers really is a public-private partnership. This is one of the greatest strengths of the U.S. approach to standards and conformity is the public-private partnership. The U.S. government is a very active participant in the standard setting process and often relies upon private sector solutions in its regulations. And government use of standards has been reflected for over 30 years in federal policy. We are talking, of course, about the OMB Circular A119 which establishes policy on the government's use of and support for voluntary consensus standards and the National Technology Transfer and Advancement Act of 1995. The NTTAA directs all federal agencies to use standards and conformity assessment solutions wherever feasible, and it directs them to do so instead of developing government unique standards or regulation. The NTTAA also encourages agencies to participate in standards development work. ANSI provides that bridge to the executive and legislative branch. We take on issues requiring involvement from all members of the ANSI Federation. We provide a problem-solving capability, a neutral convener, and we build consumer and business confidence. A good example of this is during the toy safety problem a few years ago. The problem was not the underlining standard, but the problem was the conformance of those standards. Because the U.S. government does not have the authority to inspect facilities in other countries to ensure lead-free toys, Congress authorized the use of accredited third-party inspections of Chinese factories. The Chinese government accepted this because such inspections would be done under ISO standards, which China observed. Many other countries have what we would call a top-down system, and this means that a single government agency drives the standards and conformity activities that will govern its products, systems, and services. In the U.S., our system is bottom-up. That means that it's primarily voluntary. It's private sector-led and marketplace-driven. As a result, we have multiple SDOs in this country, each working in response to a specific marketplace need. 
ANSI has over 240 accredited standard developing organizations referred to as SDOs, and the SDOs develop the standards and ANSI provides the process. Our process is open, transparent, consensus-based, and provides due process. These are our essential requirements, which is part of the U.S. standards strategy, as well as the World Trade Organization's technical barriers to trade agreement. This slide illustrates some of the SDOs and the U.S. technical advisory groups that represent the over 240 SDOs. Some of them you may already know or be working with. Standards development and conformity assessment do go hand in hand. As an ANSI standard is accepted and becomes an American National Standard, ANS, it could then become an international standard. The next potential opportunity is to then have your standard become accredited. This chart illustrates those specific areas of interest, such as laboratory and medical labs, personnel certification, greenhouse gases, etc. So our international reach. As we mentioned earlier, there are many entities that we work with on an international front. Some are bilateral agreements, and others may be regional, and still others global. ANSI, as the U.S. member body to ISO, which is the International Organization for Standards, and the International Electrical Technical Commission, we do represent the interest of the U.S. abroad. The standardsportal.org provides answers to critical standards, conformance, market access, and trade-related questions that companies require to succeed in the U.S. and around the globe. Part of the portal is dedicated to the Standards Alliance, which involves many countries around the globe. The Standards Alliance is a public-private partnership between the American National Standards Institute, ANSI, and the U.S. Aid designed to assist developing countries in effectively implementing their commitment under the WTO's Technical Barriers to Trade Agreement. This program began in 2013 when USAID and ANSI entered into a partnership. It covers a five-year initiative and it's funded between USAID and ANSI. There are 10 countries participating and it's all about capacity building assistance to developing countries. China's standardization reform is of particular interest to many of our members and the many changes that have occurred recently. The China standardization reform is something we continue to closely monitor and have created specific resource information for our members to access the latest updates. And then there's more. Depending on your own objectives, we have other areas of engagement that include a network to deliver solutions. Some of our standards panels, collaborators, or workshops, which are on a specific area that were created to solve an industry issue. These can be a one-time event or an ongoing effort to create a roadmap. A recent example is the Additive Manufacturing Collaborative, which created and worked on a 200-page roadmap in Phase 1. That was released in the fall, and Phase 2 is already underway. It's an excellent example of an industry-led private-public partnership that everyone contributed to. More recently, we've launched a service sector initiative, which has uncovered many subsector areas that need new or enhanced standards. Given the amazing growth and importance of the service sector, which represents over 80% of the U.S. GDP and accounts for over 30% of U.S. exports, we wanted to make sure we were devoting enough time and attention. In our time during this research and discovery, we've identified food and product safety, transportation, retail, and emerging technology as key areas across many sectors. Some of the emerging areas are unmanned vehicle systems, mobile health devices, and dietary supplements. As a matter of fact, we just created the Unmanned Aerial System Collaborative and we're working with the FAA and the Association of Unmanned Vehicle System International who are the co-leads on this important project. 
As mentioned earlier, the ANSI member forms are a very key area to be engaged and actively involved and provide you participation. We have the organizational member form for our associations, company member form, government member form, consumer interest form, and then they usually meet uh, twice a year. And then there's a combined joint member form, which is part of World Standards Week in October of each year. So we very much encourage you to, to join in the forum, participate. We have some great topics and great takeaways to bring back to your organization. And we've had several first-time attendees tell us this was an excellent way for them to learn from other industry colleagues, so we encourage your active participation. So mark your calendar. In addition to the member forms, we have a host of training sessions. They can be live, online. We have other events coming up, so please check our links on the events. And please consider joining us to meet fellow members and network with industry colleagues and share best practices. If you're interested in purchasing standards or finding out if standards are available, there are a couple of ways you can do that. You can visit the ANSI web store. We have additional resources available that you may not be familiar with that include searching for standards by topic category, or if you know the reference number, you can search that way. As a full member, you're eligible for discounted rates. We also have a fully staffed customer service center by telephone, email, and live chat capabilities. We also wanted to provide you key contact information for ANSI staff, as well as the membership team's information. So if you have any questions at all, we very much encourage you to contact us. We look forward to working with you. Thank you for your time and attention, and please let us know how we can help. Thank you so much.